Oh, we had a great conversation. Awesome. All right. Good evening out there in Facebook land. This is Ferdy with Falcon Talk. And as usual, I have my uh, my group of misfits. I got my buddy. Uh, my mine is on. No, it's not, brother. On on Facebook. It's on the Messenger chat, but it's on on Facebook, guys. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. Okay, um... Going back. Uh, We have uh, Guru Francis from California. We have uh, Andres, Sandy, Mick. Hello. Of course, last time and um, first time introducing to everybody... The famous Kempo Joe from Bedford, Massachusetts. Yeah, give him, give him that. <laughs> wow, I have somebody live watching me. Is it one of you guys? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> hey, like I said, I've been editing these things. Okay. All right. So tonight's tonight's uh, topic, and it might be sensitive to some people, but of course. Us here on Falcon Talk, we don't give a shit about your fe- your feelings. <laughs> and it's uh, yeah, forms like katas and uh, forms, uh, two man or uh, any drills, lock flows, in the training, yay or nay. And uh, maybe I should go first because this is my show. <laughs> 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 like okay, so I've. I have to admit, like, I've never been, like, a fan of forms, okay? And uh, for a while, I really just didn't see the use and, and then the, and the, and then the uh, need for it, okay? But then when I started, um, when I started doing uh, Hakuryu with um, Sensei uh, Harry, and then met Tom and joined um, KI, uh, they gave me a appreciation of it. Oh, guess who's watching? Jason. <laughs> so they gave me an appreciation of it. And especially with um, KI, uh, Kyushu International, because um, Evan, Evan Pantazzi, who, who runs it, and uh, whenever he has an um, event here in New York that Tom uh, hosts, he, he's given me, like, um, he's shown us stuff that that are in katas and it just makes sense it makes a lot of sense sense and one of them when i was doing taekwondo and they have a, a form called kurio kurio was like the black belt form and they had this move and it was like this right so i asked one of the guys one of the masters master carlos i said mr carlos what what does this mean and he said oh that's moving the mountain so I looked at them like, what? Moving the mountain? Like, so how is that going to help me in my, um, you know, in, in my development as a martial artist? Where am I going to use that in, com- in uh, combat, moving the mountain? Well, what if you're and, fighting the mountain from being <laughs> so then, So then um, about maybe three or four years ago, one of um, the events that Tom hosts and... Uh, Evan was um, actually like uh, breaking down the katas, right? And he and he said something which like really made sense. And he said like this move in here, like if you look at it from another the angle where you know your angle, it's kind of like a road map, and these kind of like represent your ribs. And there's a lot of things that they do. There are road maps on the body, and and then of course you have those those fancy like uh, like the Phoenix fist. Um, Iron bone, and um, and sh- he showed us like you know how to access the nerves. Now, when I was doing taekwondo, we had this you know this thing. He, they said it was the the ridge hand, and the ridge hand was you know this the meat part. But then when we're doing um, uh, ki, and we're um, studying the bubishi hands, you find out that it's actually this knuckle here. Right, this bone here called the iron bone, and that's where you would um. You know we can't see you, brother. Okay, 
All right. Well, anyways. Bernie, your camera's off. We can't see you. If you're you demonstrating can't... anything, we oh, can't see. I'm I'm doing it on here. Hold on. Let me see if I can, can put my. It on Facebook. We can't Sorry, see him because we're a messenger. I don't know why it's not I'm turning on here. Hearing you, but not being able to see what you're talking about. For for something, it's not. It's not. I can't put my camera on here. I don't know why. Feels breaking. Yeah. Well, any, using, well anyways. Separate. No, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do. I um I had um, the chat here on my um laptop, and I'm doing Facebook Live on my uh phone, and for some reason I don't know why it's not letting me do it. I guess it's just. Uh, but anyways, anyways, um, Tom, um, yes. you know what I'm talking about, right, Tom? And are you yeah. still driving? Because maybe you could actually show them what I'm talking about. No, I'm not driving. Hi guys. Okay. Hi, Tom. There the is lighting. Tom. There he is. Yeah, Tom, like the ridge hand as opposed to iron bone. So he's talking about we learned ridge hand was a stiff hand, and you know you're, you're hitting with the side of the hands just here. You know, but but uh, like the BC and everyone says, Joe, your head's gonna fall off and happen. From you going, why? Well, <laughs> you're moving all over the place. Man. <laughs> Hang on. Here we go. Track so, on. We're hitting here, right? We're hitting here, we're hitting here. But when it comes to, like, the Bubishi hands uh, that Evan's always teaching, we're using yeah, the bone. See, this is the bone. Thumb knuckle, thumb knuckle bone. Yeah, so, iron thumb bone. Knuckle, right? Yep. It's called iron bone in the Bubishi. So we're hitting with that instead of here. Mm -hmm. So general martial artists to this, we're doing that. So, yeah, so I, I actually believe, and I don't know if I, I heard it from somebody, but I actually believe that forms the katas from the Okinawans were basically um, uh, made for two reasons, to teach and to hide. To teach uh, the Okinawans, but to hide from, like, uh, the, the Guaylo, so to speak. <laughs> so what are your thoughts, people? Let let let's give it to uh, Kempo Joe first since he's the uh, the newbie. Guest of honor. Guest of honor. Oh, no, he's a newbie now. He's not a guest. He's a newbie. He's a part of us. All right. Okay. I don't. I don't. Again, I don't feel that forms anything was quote unquote hidden in forms purposely against because you're a Caucasian. Um, I, there are three levels to base any basic form. Uh, going from the ancient Chinese on up, and in Chinese it was uh, Chin Na, Chuan Fa. And Tian Shui, which are grappling hand. Someone grabs you. What do you do? The second level is Chuan Fa, the law of the fist, which is basically if the guy goes to punch you or kick you or an offensive action, what you do in response to that. And then the third level is Tian Shui, which is the death touch, which is in Okinawa they call it Tui Te, which is the grappling hand. Um, you know, uh, karate or kempo, which is again the law of the fist, and then uh, again in Chinese they would call uh, also in Cantonese they call dimma. We know it in Okinawan as kyusha. Now again, the first level is you know what? First of all, I would say with katas, nobody fights fair in a kata. Nobody fights nobody fair permanently. <laughs> I always jokingly say it's fightus interruptus. I was right in the middle of someone and somebody jumped me. They're from over here, over here, behind me, because they saw, they, because, I mean, look, folks, people haven't changed. People say, oh, no, nobody's changed. You still get some low-life scumbags who want to sucker punch you. You still get people who want to get the drop on you, irregardless of culture, irregardless of political connotation, irregardless of religious background, people are still people. So a lot of those various elements still hold true. I laugh when I hear certain styles say certain, oh, I would never do that, a tack will never work, and that never, and uh, I, I laugh at them. I do the two things you don't do during sex, point and laugh. And they're funny. <laughs> you know? They don't know what they're talking about. I'm like, you know, when did That's people change? A tacks may have changed, but people who don't know martial arts, it's the same people who sit there and say, oh, you know, never underestimate your opponent. Newsflash, don't overestimate him either. There are some exactly. people out there that need a quarter to buy a clue that are just ticked off at you and for whatever reason they're going to grab you or they're going to hold you or they're going to do mm -hmm. some type of going to push you away or they're going to pull you toward them. Why? Because they don't know anything else. 
not everybody's a master of the martial arts. So when we look at those forms, those techniques are broken down, not only in the techniques at the beginning of a technique, but a technique in the middle of the technique, and also a technique at the end of the technique. Those transitional movements and those transitional actions are designed to make your art more three-dimensional. So you're not just squaring off with a guy, Marcus the Queensberry rules. And um, I would say the beauty of forms is uh, we can do anything we want. Mm -hmm. Meaning if I spar somebody, I can't poke them in the eyes. I can't chop them in the throat. I can't rupture their eardrums. I can't put their, I can't put a lump in their throat that they used to go to the bathroom with. My ability in katas mean and forms means I can I can all bets are off. The whole alphabet's out there. And I think that's the beauty of the art. Mm. But I really think it's up to us to be able to look at that from those various perspectives. And when we do, it's amazing what we find within the structure of our, our, our forms. And remember, forms on its most basic rudimentary concept are nothing more than techniques placed together. And as long as we understand that, you know, we can use any any series of actions you can do a jkd kata i know that sounds like sacrilege but if i take if i take saa and sda and i do straight blast and i turn on a 90 degree angle and do that saa and sda and straight blast in that angle and i turn and do the opposite side of it holy guacamole batman i just did a form mm -hmm. <laughs> well we, ha we we do have a uh a jkd um guy on mick <laughs> 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 To, to kind of go off of what Joe was saying and simplify it into a layman's term, so if we have people listening who don't train in martial arts and don't understand the need for it, put it to you this way, if you're, if you're a coach of a softball or, or baseball team, right, and you're going to teach somebody how to swing a bat, you show them how to stand, you show them how to hold their arms, you show them how to hold the bat, you show them how to choke up on it, you show them how to put their elbows up, you show them each individual component of that swing. But until they actually physically do the swing, they don't really understand it. Well, in a martial art, when you train somebody, you train each individual technique. You train the front ball kick, the side kick, the ridge hand, the hammer fist, the two knuckle punch. You train those things individually. What a kata or a form does is show you how you can move with those techniques and do them successively at one after the other. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, so it I, does, I, like he said, bring it into the 3D, uh -huh. make, make the martial arts an actual 3D version of it, because at that point, when you first do Nakata, is when you're actually learning how to do technique after technique, not separately, if that makes sense. Yeah, but if you just, the, the thing is, um, what, and I, what I've seen is that people just, and th these are schools, they just teach, teach the form without letting the student know what it's for or or um giving an understanding to the student you know and then they so they the and then they don't you know because like, again when i was um with my uh teacher in hakuru and he also taught uh shotokan and when he was teaching shotokan he he had his students do the forms okay he said all right we're going to do the katas and then he had him do two man katas and then he said he would have them like do an attack and they'd have to see if the, what they can bring, what technique they can bring from the kata to uh, nullify the attack. And so I'm, what I'm saying is like, and what Bruce Lee said that a lot of times people, they just do these forms. It's like um, swimming on uh, land. He called it organized despair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. But then again, in that respect, then, it's not the form that is failing or the kata that is failing. It is the instructor. Exactly. The exactly. See, I. Of what the, use it is for. That's that's you know, when I first thought you know did it, I you know, and then when I delved in other arts, because my base being Filipino, when I delved in other arts, and uh, and saw how it was taught, then I gained an appreciation for it. You know, it's like a, it's like a, um, uh, an FMA. All right, um, you can do like a hoobud, or you can do like a, I know Tom hates them, um, the heaven and earth, uh, the heaven and earth, or, or heaven six, or whatever. Terminology. Uh, terminology. Yeah, yeah, terminology. But uh, but the thing is, like, if you break it down, you you break it down, 
you can see the value in it. I mean, I love the Hubud. I just love the Hubud. And um, to me, it's like the tip of the iceberg, and there's so much. And if you break down that Hubud, uh, to me, it's like, you know, Hubud and with, with proper footwork, it, it's like you can take anything and make it a weapon by using just the Hubud principles, the Hubud um, movement. And I just, to me, I, I, I just love that. And and I'm um, using also like the hubud. I can counter most uh, most other techniques, you know. Like um, um like uh, okay. can I chime in? Please? Sure, sure. Uh, this is Francis. So like, I mean, I understand where you guys are coming from. I mean, me personally, as my school is concerned, um, we practice a uh, sayao, which is our version of the kata or the yeah. forms, right? Yeah, sayao. So, um, Sayao means so we, dance to those. To those yeah, uh, Sayao means dance in, in, to translate. Um, so, and then we also use the Hubad techniques, which, if you know what the Hubad means, it means to take off, right? Yeah. Um, and the Hubad means like you're your feet, Yeah, Hubad right? means like to strip. <laughs> right, exactly. Bud. Exactly. So, I mean, so so when we when we actually, my school, what I'm very proud to say that my school is, um, we are, my, my team is, is the current world champion in GSBA in team forms, and I'm very, very proud of that. Only because it's, it's. It, I think that forms is just one half of the training, and then uh, because it, I mean the one thing is like it, it does teach you fluidity, it teaches you, uh, you know, uh, control, it teaches you your, it teaches you to control your body, right? And then you have, but then it's like I said, it's just one half. You need the aspect of, of competition, like an actual fighting, as close to fighting as you can get, like to like you know, real fighting as you can get, and and then you, you need to be able to do that. So if your if, if if your group if your school is only good at one one half you know one aspect of it, then yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not taking anything away from it. I'm, I'm it's, it is in, that in itself is a great accomplishment, but in my opinion, that's just half the half the story. I'm also very proud of the fact that even though my school is the current world GSBA world team champions, I also have world champions that are in the competition, like in the fighting side, you know, and these are the same people. In fact, one of them is sitting right next to me right now. Um, he, 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 he holds both the, the, gold, uh, the championship in both the team forms and in the, in the competition. So it needs to be both. What I want the form, what the Sayao does is it, it teaches them accuracy. And to me, as an instructor, accuracy is way more important than speed and power, because it doesn't it doesn't matter how fast you are, it doesn't matter how strong you are. If you can't hit your opponent, then who gives a care? You know, I mean, it's like it's like the stormtroopers that just keep shooting everywhere, right? But not hitting anything. That's except why they block. Except lifesavers. Remember, that's <laughs> what they do. Okay, you need accuracy, in that, and that's what forms does. It forces them to slow down. It forces them to imagine the opponent that's in front of them to make sure that they're accurately striking. And then when you put the right person in front of them, then it's just a matter of, like, now just turn up the speed, turn up the power, you know, and then be able to hit your opponent in the spot that you that you wanted to hit to, to, them, especially in competition since there are no-no spots, right? So if you're just flailing wildly, you know, you're going to get disqualified because you're hitting spots where you're not supposed to hit. So accuracy, accuracy actually is one of the things that I strongly emphasize with my students, and that's where forms bring that in. But then forms is just the training, while the competition is the is the application. That's just my two cents. Mm, thank you. I agree thank with you. That. Thank you. Had, I'm sorry, Sandy. Go ahead. That's okay. I had an instructor who used to say we practice perfect in the dojo because if when you are attacked. The adrenaline is going to be running through you, and you're not going to be able to give a perfect, you know, response to it because of the adrenaline. So if you don't practice perfect in the dojo, if you only practice that 50 percent accuracy, and when you're attacked, you're only going to be able to defend yourself with 25, 10 percent. So you practice perfectly. The accuracy is perfect, and that's what the point. And that was that was our friend Ed there, by the way, Joe. You practice the form in a perfect, so that way they are, it, when you are attacked and you're surprised and you have that adrenaline running, you know you will be able to respond with the highest that you possibly can, because your body will react the way it's trained. So I agree with you there, Francis. Thank you for that. Thank you, Sandy. Mm. You're welcome. 
All right, anybody else like to chime in? How about uh, Tom? You there? I'm here. Would you like to put your 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 um two cents in? Uh, what about uh, you don't stuff your sensei does? Is that what we're talking about? About um. That was last week. <laughs> about forms, about drills, about. I I mean my my take on it is, with with um with all three aspects is if you're just doing it and you don't know why you're doing it and you know you don't know what you're trying to accomplish in it then it's just like um uh, it's just useless um repetition. Well, Daniel's not didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. And and he then did he did. got into the fight, and he just did it. And boom, it came out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. He learned to go back. He did Kaza. Yeah. He got to all over the place. <laughs> it, <laughs> hey, that was an illegal <laughs> kick to the face. That was illegal kick to the face. Yeah, so, his, so, his first attack, he was just doing the paint defense and the wax the car, the wax on and wax off. It wasn't him doing kata until after he realized that the repetitiveness was actually a technique. Mm -hmm. Well, he did a I've kata. Watched them, I've watched that movie way too many times. <laughs> I love what he I mean. You know, he's practicing, you know, what... It, you only had so much time to teach him. So what do you teach him? Keyhole. Basics. Yeah. Basic blocks. Basic punches. Basic kicks. That's it. Mm -hmm. Basics. It's all, I had, it's all I had time to teach him. You didn't have time to teach him Tom. That's why he learns. That's what he learns about in the second and third films. I mean, what's he doing? What's he doing at the end of the third film? He's doing Tata. Yep. You know, he's mm -hmm. doing Sansei. He's doing, you know. I thought you were doing Snake Tata. Fist. He's doing, you know, he's doing Goju Kata. I thought you were doing a snake fist. <laughs> oh, you can't say my my snake. <laughs> no, the first the first Jackie Chan movie I ever saw. <laughs> so okay, they they are important. Uh, drills are important. Uh, hey, Corey. Important. Hey, sorry about that. That's hey. all right. Another phone is bastard. Yeah. Um, if you if you even if you don't know what you're doing, it's practice. It's movement. It's balance. Um, like I said, Daniel Sutton had no idea, and then all of a sudden, bam, he pulls it out. So, it's, he, I mean, it's good to know, it's a beautiful thing to know what you're actually doing. Of course, of course. You know? But, yeah, there are guys that have no idea and just keep passing on, like you said, the, the no idea what's going on, just do it. And, you know, to their students, yeah. and they become instructor, and they say, just do it. Oh. You know. I was recently at a national tournament. And, you know, I was, I was there at the, I'll say, at the Capitol Classic. And uh, one of my students was competing, and I was there for uh, Jesse Bowen's um, Martial Arts Masters and Pioneers uh, book and whatnot. So anyway, so I walk up and uh, jumping from uh, Florida, Manny Reyes is there, well, runs uh, the World Kempo Federation. He's talking with people from Maryland, and he's like, hey, Joe, why don't you take over and take a, they got a lot of questions. And come to find out, I'm talking to these people. And they're going to be competing in black belt division, doing one of Mr. Parker's forms, the black belt form. And they don't know the techniques in the form. They just know motion. I move here, I move there. And I'm like going, so let me get this straight. In one of the most technique-driven arts that there is in the martial arts, you're going to do one of the black belt forms, and you don't know the names of the techniques and what the techniques and application are. And I know that, at that point, I knew why Manny walked away, because he was disgusted. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but that's the problem. I mean, you know, a lot of people, depending on the different arts, have learned the particular kata or form or kyung or say, And um, all they have is the empty shell. Yep. And, uh, you know, the coolest thing I found through training in so many different martial arts is when I train another martial art and suddenly it gives me the answer to this movement in this form in my system. And yep. I go, okay, now I know why we're doing this over here. Now I understand that. Like you talk about Huban, you know, I always taught Huban and Luban to, to tie and to untie. You know, I mean, we talk about, like, we talk about brush hold strike. Well, you know, if I do circular blocks with one system and I do a palm to a palm, or maybe I do a knife hand to a knife hand, or maybe I do a ridge hand to a knife hand, you know, I, I learn that circular motion. If I do brush hold strike and I look at Huban and I go, okay, the opposite of in is out. The opposite of palm out is going to be palm in. 
okay, the opposite of circular is going to be linear. So now I can do brush, hold, stripe, or I can do the opposite of that, which is parry, check, straight punch. You can call it sun fist, a standing fist, a yakun, a straight blast. I got 47 names for them. But, uh, you know, but, uh, but it's still understanding those overall concepts and applying them in the context of our form. And then watching how another style what takes action? those exact same movements and applies them. And in so doing, we get greater insight. And, um, mm. you know, that's... Yeah, I, I love I love what you talk about there because you can see kind of like the similar principles too and concepts that they're doing. I mean, the the brush. I I think I saw that. It might have been you that I saw that the brush. Uh, probably my uh, video. Yeah, brush probably one of it because it was on Kempo. It was probably you. And I haven't met you yet. We haven't met yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am Kempo Joe. Google me, baby. Google me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I'd like to get Corey um, on um, how he visions um, katas, because uh, on our last on our um, last sama sama, you know, Corey did a kata and then he did uh, a bunkai, and that's what I appreciate. I appreciate when somebody does a form and then they explain the bunkai. That, that's right. something that I appreciate, and that's something that I didn't get when I was doing forums. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and for, I, I got to also admit, you know, since I started doing really a lot more weapons training, um, a lot of it opened up uh, to me, the real guy behind it. And, like, the, the gentleman that was speaking before. That's Kempo have, Joe. Say hello Kempo to Kempo Joe. Joe. <laughs> Joe, that's Corey. Yep. Mm -hmm. I had a chance. Uh, on the west coast with uh, you know Kempo uh, style there and uh, also with the Sifu Keith Maza uh, with Wing Chun and when I got to see the origins of some of our strikes like you know that parry like the Ganun that we have in Saison is I saw from Crane right uh, also Tiger Claw where we have that, that bunkai we're repairing, we're breaking the, the elbow, and then we're grabbing that muscle, or we're striking the elbow, and we're grabbing that bicep, that muscle, and we're ripping it to our hip. Uh, when I got to go and see other uh, uh, styles train, and I got to ask those detailed questions, it enhanced my own art a lot better. Um, and then when I really started getting into weapons training, it even opened up, and I could see uh, that format. But one of the things we do, and in, in the lineage that I, that I grew up with in Ishinru, is we do bunkai from the very beginning. So when we teach forms, you know, we'll break that form down. You know, we'll start with the basic tinan, and so on. The basic, you know, we have our upper body basics. And we take that into like a one-step sparring scenario for those that are familiar with like Taekwondo, one-step, three-step, um, with self-defense techniques and show them the bunkai behind each basic movement. And then when we get to the true uh, style forms, they have an understanding of where the strikes are going, what the target is of the body, or it's the hard tissue, soft tissue, and what part of the hand or elbow or foot or knee is making that strike, and then we tear down each of those uh, uh, sections within a kata for bunkai, right? And we, and then we just practice that. We just practice the bunkai. We, we pair up, and, and we want to do that. Um, so from an empty hand perspective, really, bunkai training up front as you're learning the form to me is important. Um, and I also, you know, some schools don't introduce weapons until they're like brown belts, black belts. I'm also a fan now of introducing uh, basic weapons a lot earlier. So uh, bow, you know, maybe a person has a year and a half, a year experience, introduce them to bow or, or uh, a scheme of sticks or something like that, where they're doing the same hand movements, but we're extending it out. Um, because as they advance, you know, they put three, four, five years in and they're going for the black belt at four or five years. 
then it becomes critical. Now I'm looking for speed. I'm looking for technique in the forms. I'm looking for that, uh, you know, when I'm questioning them, what are you striking? What is the variation? What can you do from once you do this movement? What are your options? You know, if you get stuck there, what are your options? And have them start thinking outside the box. Uh, and that ties into flow drills as well, right? So we take the, the form that's given. We show them the train or the generally accepted. You don't see my hand, my finger quotes here, right? generally accepted bunkai that's taught that's a, a, approved by you know the multiple schools that we teach in our association but then we take it a step further especially as they gain more knowledge is okay that's what you were taught from a bunkai perspective but what else can you do from there let's say you know your hands hurt or your elbows not working or your legs hurt what can you do so um from a forms perspective, I'm not a big tournament guy uh, in terms of forms uh, because what I see, uh, uh, I don't like. I don't like what I see in a lot of forms, uh, especially you know some of the sloppiness with the footwork and handwork and uh, stuff like that. Um, but I like to watch the advanced people do forms, um, but for kids. It's a good way to motivate them and show them uh, that they accomplishment and they got out there in front of a crowd and uh, did something that's scary, right, and, and have that uh, growth. Uh, but outside of that, I, I don't like doing tournament forms. Um, I don't think when you're at a black belt level or a senior or master level, you know, you hit fourth down and above, you know, you're doing the same form that everybody else is. And as we get older, we don't move the same way or we get modified and our hips don't have the flexibility anymore uh, like we used to for kicks or spinning kicks and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I think it's good as a training tool to distill discipline. It's a good tool to implement self-defense or at least uh, flow movements from one position to another. Especially, you know, most of our forms are based on stances. Like we have Seisan, Solution, uh, Nahachi, Shinto, which all which have specialty stances that are built in them, right? Like Seisan is a forward stance, uh, Seishin is heel to toe, or some people interpret it as almost like a, a horse stance. Nahachi is an inverted uh, pigeon stance, uh, Shinto is a, a T stance, a reverse T stance basically, as some people may call it that. Um, and, in, and that's what the specialty is. Okay, you're in the stance, here's the situation. This is how your body mechanics work. Move in, move out, uh, and apply. So, mm. so, so from what um, I get from you is like, you um, do the, uh, as you're teaching the form, you're showing on the onset what the technique is, what the what the bunka is, Absolutely. something that yeah. Joe, you were saying is that's how Ed Parker um, approaches it. Well, again, the the way the the Ed Parker, the American Kempo forms are different. Like you know, if if I'm if I'm talking to we're talking about Ishin Ru, and I sit there and say, okay, why do we drop to a why do we use one side and drop to a kneeling stance in Chatinyara no Sai? You right. know, we look at that and we say, okay, that's there's a new concept. Uh, I, uh, one of the great punk guys I ever saw regarding that was, I'm sitting in Seiza and some guy on the side attacks me and tries to stab me. I was like, that's a great concept. I'm sitting in Seiza, I drop to a kneeling stance, I block, bang, I hit him. Now I've got time to draw my second side and do my rest of my kata. Or my, my, my rest of my bunkai. If I'm doing yep. Tokumini no Kun, you know, I'm working my crossover. So, and you know, I mean, when each particular form and each particular system has a set series of bunkai and a set of lessons it teaches you. And I think that as we become more educated, um, more of that past knowledge is becoming more open to more individuals. Uh, more people are seeing, like, if, if I, like, again, if I'm working with Uezu Sensei or I'm working with Joe Jennings or I'm working with Lula Saka, I've been told, and Ishin Ru, if I'm doing, if I'm doing Sanche, you know, I worked at hourglass stance. Well, if I do Fukien, White Crane, Kung Fu, we do the same stance. 
If I do Weichiru, we do the same stance. If I do Go Chokwen, five ancestor fist, rocket science, we do the same stance. Right. And, um, you know, I've got, when I work with different styles, it really gives me greater insight. I just get messy with this <laughs> uh, I get greater insight into things. So, you know, I mean, um, doing Wing Chun, it's the same stance. You know, I mean, Sanchin is basically Southern myth, it's same stance. Yep. And um, my favorite line is, uh, what is it? I'm a woman. I want to keep my knees together. I don't want to stand with my legs spread apart because I'm kind of wearing a dress. Right. Uh, <laughs> and when you talk about it that way, suddenly it's just simple logic. Mm, you know, right. and that triangulated stance and to watch how people trap and lock with it. And, uh, you know, we do it from that traditional... You know, oh, and you know, there's certain things that you learn that that you look at and go, "Wow, that's interesting." Yeah. For instance, all right, anybody, who does sanchin here? I uh, we do, we do sanchin. What hand do you hit with first? Uh, <laughs> not even testing me, right? Uh, no, no contest. I would say it's left. my right hand. The right hand, isn't it? No, nope, left. I think. See. Cool. He's doing, he's doing you know his head. why? I had to do it. In, yeah, it is left. Yeah, because the founder of the system was left-handed, <laughs> and he wanted to do stuff to screw with you. <laughs> he who, wanted to screw with you. Who, who founded that? One boxer, no Wait. boxer wants to fight. Right. A southpaw. Mm -hmm. Southpaw. Exactly. So, yeah. so he was a left-handed person. So he hit you first with the left hand, so you were like, what the fuck am I? You know, and if you watch Wei Chi Ru, they do it with an open spear. Why? Well, it's based on Spookin, White Crane, and Wing Chun, which was created by a woman. Hey, you know what? I don't want to bludgeon somebody with a closed fist. I'll break my hand, but I'll sure poke you in the eye, and I know it'll work. Yeah. You don't bench press with your eyeball. That's true. Can't build that up. I said that before too. <laughs> how, much you, how much can you bench press with your eyes? Knock a right? So when we look at the orientation of various gonna get water. forms, we also have to look at the orientation of who created them and why. Once we do, we get greater insight. Anybody here do Wing Chun? I for Wing Chun was a woman. Wing Chun was a woman. Yep. yep. So she what does she a... do? Her first form. You grab oh, my wrist. Up. I'm a woman. A man is more prone to grab a woman's wrist than he is another man, unless he's doing a samurai-based art and he's trying to stop the samurai from drawing his sword. Mm -hmm. right. So what's the first movement? You grab my wrist, I knock it away with my other hand. And I use an open hand, not a closed fist. Then if you grab both my hands like this, I cross them and I bring them up. So now you're stuck and I'm free of the grip. Yeah. See, well, that's, that's, that's what I like. Time. It's like, why? If, if, if you understand the why, you, you, get the, you get the how, and then you actually appreciate it also. You appreciate it more. You bet. Yeah. Semlin Tao. That was a form. Yep. yep. Little idea form. And what is it? It's a little idea. It's yeah. ten sets of little ideas. I was working with a woman the other day about it, and we were talking about it. I teach, I teach numerous martial arts. <laughs> Somebody asked me, there, how many martial arts have you studied, Joe? I went 60, six, zero. Chinese, Okinawan, Japanese, Korean, Filipino, Indonesian, American martial arts. Which means I got a 162 IQ, a photographic and a photo identic memory, and I don't have a life. This is all I do, man. So we're talking and, about and that. remember, remember, if your woman doesn't support your martial arts, she's gone. Gone, yeah. like. Now we had that conversation this early, yes, earlier. We did. <laughs> well, we were talking about wrist. Not wrap. everybody does that. Not everybody does that. Yeah. You remember Tom, my last girlfriend? It, you know, let me be honest, Bertie. It puts a lot of uh, pressure on the marriage. Is this uh, our relationship? It's That's why I'm still single. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That no honestly is why a lot of a lot of martial arts instructors start out their school married to one woman and end up with another and that is not being mean it's because they end up beating a student that um is obviously interested in the same aspect and understands what they're going through to train that 
Yeah. So yeah, it happens more than you know. All right, that'll be another subject. That'll be another topic. That's another. Tangent, that's another sorry. topic. Tangent, tangent, another topic. Mick, why didn't you stop me? Mick is gone. I don't know where you left. Mick left. We'll get him. Sorry, tangent. No, 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 no. But I love this. I, I, I love this. I love um. You know, I never knew how deep it was, and I mean, I. I do appreciate the forms, you know, I, I do appreciate it, but now I have more of an appreciation. You know, especially when you, like, understand the history, like, like what Joe is saying, who the founder is, and, um, you know, why why did they do that? Well, be, be exactly, like, oh, the guy's left-handed, he's a southpaw, okay, that makes sense. That makes a well, lot there of are, sense. There are some hilarious moves in certain forms. Like, you talked about Silla Dow, right? Yeah. Okay, here's a funny move from Silam Dow. So I'm working with a woman. And it was like, and, and Sandy will love this. I'm listening. I have a tripod. I get to move this stuff around. So. Oh, awesome. We have a movement. We, and Silam Dow, they have a movement where. Yeah, to the back. From here, right? Yeah, the back. Oh, I've seen Donnie Yen do that. <laughs> if man. So, what is it? Some guy's trying to stick his crotch in your crotch. You're a woman. He grabs you by the hips and tries to pelvic thrust you. So you push down on a 45 degree angle so his hips fold. He ends up going backwards, backpedaling, or falls on his butt. Another guy tries to come and grab you from behind. He grabs you from the hips and tries to do the pelvic thrust in the back door. You bring your hands to your face and your spine, push back on a 45. It folds the hips and drives him backwards. It's an anti-bang technique. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too bad we could. Too bad the people on the. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Man, that's awesome. When we look at practical anti -bang. reality, I, you know, the biggest thing we're so caught up in our Oriental mysticism that we forget we're just human beings that try and defend ourselves against some jerk who's attacking us. Maybe oh, they got to kill. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what happened? I said, oh, man, somebody's saying the truth. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and I, no, 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 well, not you and not anybody in this group. I'm talking the martial artists out there who just want to make, if I'm not even called martial artists, who just want to make it look good. And this is, this is the thing that I always loved about um, Bruce Lee. If it looks good, it ain't going to work. <laughs> It's yeah. the stuff that doesn't look good that's gonna be the stuff that's practical. If this looks good, it and, belongs and, in the movie. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. that's and that's like we were just talking about history and stuff like that, and and the fact that knowing and understanding what you're doing that form for and the reason you're doing it is what gives the knowledge. It's the instructors now again, like we just said, it's not the form failing; it's the instructor failing. Mm -hmm. It's the instructor who can't explain that to you. I mean, like, historically for a samurai, a samurai did not train kata in the normal sense where they created kata. They did two-man katas. But their katas came from watching a battle, seeing what worked, and then creating a kata out of what worked in the battle. It's kind of so like So that they would practice that. It's, so, it's kind of like And that was... No, go ahead. I'm sorry, okay. Sandy. Go ahead, no, Sandy. But that's what they did, and that's why they did kata. They didn't do individual katas. They didn't do, you know, they did two-man kata so that they could practice what had worked. And then if, here's the fun thing, though. If they turned around and practiced that, and in the next battle they tried it and somebody countered it, they scrapped it and started over again. Yeah. That's what they did, and they had a reasoning for it. It's the instructors now who can't tell you the reason, or they want to make a kata just so it it, um, it matches the music that they use. <laughs> well, that's not martial arts. That's performing arts. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's they, what I call that performing arts. Wasn't that like but, XMA back in the eighties when that came out, or the kata the music or something like that? Yeah, founded by wow, Mike. That was the 90s, Corey. That was the 90s. Yes, the 90s, yes. But here's the thing. Like, someone was... Corey and I are old, you. okay? <laughs> <laughs> I remember Spoon Ree starting that back in, like, 85. That commercial, remember that commercial? 
Well, oh, yeah, Mark no, did ballet. Yeah. 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 If you yeah. don't, yeah. I remember there was a commercial Junie did. Yeah. Nobody hey, bother uh, me. Nobody me. bother me. <laughs> I do Junie Cook Taekwondo. Nobody bother me. Nobody bother me. <laughs> yeah, there two kids. Nobody bother me. <laughs> Hey, who's calling me? No, this is Corey. I was going to say, to build off what you were saying about the samurai, you know, today's equivalent of modern technique uh, for kata or bunkai, right, is when you have wrestlers uh, or boxers or fighters that are taking tapes of their opponents, and they're looking at their moves, they're dissecting those moves, and they're trying to figure out how to counter or, or improve their art so that those techniques that their opponents are using are, are going against them um, or right. would be effective, right? And that's what our modern day equivalent is of that is, you no, know, go to the tape. Let's see what the tape says. Uh, Absolutely. In, in that terms. And uh, I like to look at tape too when, you know, when we have uh, tournaments and we spar. Mm -hmm. um, I try to always get somebody to videotape those matches uh, because then I can go back and I'll, and I'll actually do like a one-on-one -on -one with the with the kids or the adults that are fighting and say, all right, you see here, you dropped your hand. We got to work on that. You got lazy. You, you led with your head. That's where you got kicked in the face, you know, or uh, something like that. And it tape is a wonderful training tool. And oh, yes. We're, yes. We're Video. Blessed yes. Now mm -hmm. to have such cheap are inexpensive ways to videotape and, and track our technique and our fighting styles because you can find mistakes and mm -hmm. you can self-train and but as a coach or an instructor you it opens up the door to make your mm. students so much better oh, yeah. my ultimate goal is to get not to be the best but to make the best all my students way better than me uh in both life and, and skill sets mm. so that that's that's why at these events mm -hmm. Me and I know Joe also. We both carry that tripod with the camera. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm there. I'm yeah. there to learn. I'm not there to. Uh, to exactly. uh, you know. Yeah. You know that that's the great thing about these events and you guys. My my very first instructor in life and always said uh, this to me and, me and I and this is one of the things I take with me. He said I am going to teach you everything I know, but I don't know everything. So take what I teach you and then go out and find more right. and see if it's better. And if it is, learn that. And if it's worse, throw that away and keep going. But always keep learning because I'll teach you what I know, but I don't know everything. And and I that it gives me the most respect for an instructor like that because when you have instructors who think I, I, I what I know is the best and you don't have to learn anything else, especially when you have somebody who's really below the standard like best that's scary well, you know that becomes a that's cult it. and and, and that's like my worst that's why i've drawn back from most organizations is that false obligation that are being requested of people especially higher ranks and you know the lower rank stuff i the false obligations uh kind of keep me up uh, especially with that kind of uh, attitude. I'm the best. You can't go anywhere else. <laughs> I know yeah. somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, I've actually had an instructor say that to me, literally say these words to me when I told him when my first instructor said, he said to me, well, after I'm done with you, you won't have to learn anything else because I am the best. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. What he was teaching was good, so it's kind of scary that that's, you know, because what he was teaching was good, but yeah, you're right. He yeah, the attitude was not. My um, know? my uncle, my um, late uncle, back in the Philippines, he was like one of the top um corporate lawyers, and he was like called one of the best um lawyers, petroleum oil lawyers in all of Asia. And he says, "I don't care how good you are, how good you think you are. There's always somebody there that's faster, stronger, better, and smarter." Yep. One, mm -hmm. two, or even three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Leaf, or the a better sax player. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's no one better than Tom on the sax. No one's better than me. Go on. Come on, go. 
Go go play your pop pops. <laughs> You want me to go get my whole house set too, please? So, Tom, yeah, why is your yet. picture sideways, Tom? Uh, my Are phone you? is uh, oh, okay. it's training. I, I'm learning how to sit on a wall. Uh, oh, I, 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 I just. <laughs> yeah. Your chakra got built up and you're floating now. Hey, I nominate Tom to write our theme song to his, with the saxophone. We ain't doing no theme song. The, what? The Pink Panther? The 70s action film. That would be the best. Okay. Yeah, but is this the end? no. Wait, what, Sandy? I, what you were talking about, your instructor, um, to go. Yeah. He doesn't know everything. Those are the best instructors because my Hakuryu instructor, he used to say to be, oh, okay, um, go out there, learn it, learn it, bring it back, and he said, teach it to me, and I was like, whoa. He said, teach it to me. Let's pick it apart and let's see if we can counter it. That was his thing. That was that's the thing, you know. And, yeah. you, nobody oh, knows. Mine's like a parachute works the best when it's open, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what are you doing now, Spider Man, Tom? Yep, I think he's Batman. <laughs> he's the Airbender now. Ooh, he's the Spider Man. <laughs> hey Ben, don't talk to me about Batman. I got four hundred Batmans here. So oh, you know. I love. That's I another. That's another, another thing I love about okay. Joe. He's, he's a he's a comic book nerd like me. Let's go into my yeah. I got I just got featured on two different TV shows about my Batman collection. Yeah, nice Batman. Nice. You know what? Um, here's a cool story. Okay, so when I was work, I was I was working in the um, shipping uh, business, and I used to deal with this company. And one of the girls at the company, her husband, did lettering for DC Comics, right? And his favorite was Batman. So this was back in 2000. I said, you know how I envision Batman? I envision Batman to be like trained as a ninja. That's why I envision Batman. You know, do all this ninja training. And what do you know? 2004 comes and look what they, comes out. Batman begins. And what does he train as? A ninja. ninja. Yeah. And I'm saying, man, did they take my, did they take my idea? Should I get compensated for that? <laughs> So, Bertie, I gotta tell you, one of my students, his father was the illustrator for Archie Comic Books. Oh, cool. Oh, here in Chester, yeah. Wow. So he used to work in Manhattan mm. to do uh, Archie okay. illustrations. Okay, hold on, let me just interject. Um, I, we're good with the subject, because we can just, I, I can just log off on um, FB, uh, on um, uh, Facebook, Facebook and, we can, cool. and we can continue this conversation offline. Sure. Well, let's let's summarize because you know I missed a little bit at the beginning, and I'll, unfortunately. Too late. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to watch. You'll have to watch the uh, the um, what do you call it. the uh, the recording. Anyways, I'm gonna edit the recording. I'm gonna edit oh, okay. and. Uh, and cut you out. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut. Yeah, we'll cut. We'll cut time out. And, uh, <laughs> oh, hey, Joe. In case you don't know what we're talking about, stay on with us because we all talk together after when we're offline. Yeah, we, to, we, 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 get to, we get to talk about people we can't mention on there. <laughs> like Joe, we talk about Joe. Oh, awesome. Marshall, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. So I hope you, everybody enjoyed that. I hope everybody enjoyed that and was uh, very educated. I, I was. I, I thank all my host of Mif Misfits here, uh, Tempo Joe, Andres, Tom, Sandy, and Corey. They're... I think Mick and so Francis, Francis left out. Francis and Francis Russell. left and yeah. so did Mick, I think, you know. Mm. But anyways. My sensei's YouTube. Yeah, so so um, I don't know guys, let's let's think about um a topic for next week, uh, but um you we'll, 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 well, wait, hold on. We'll we'll see everybody next week and have a great fourth of July. Oh and then um, happy birthday to my nephew Stefan. Happy thirty first birthday. I love you. Alright.